I'm back. Sorry about the long hiatus, but I'm, I'm going to make it up to you. I've got a big, big main event in this edition of SmackDown. So let's go for it. Let's go. My name is Stuart Vine and welcome to episode 23 of my modern day WWE save on TEW 2020. I apologise for a long hiatus, the last couple of weeks have been a bit stressful on a certain level, so obviously finding time to do this has been hard, but I'm back, I'm back, and we've got, I'm back for our Smackdown edition that I've been working on for a very long time. So yes, obviously a big, big Smackdown uh, we're going to talk about, well, but before we talk about that, if you like what, what you see here, please like and subscribe, uh, pretty happy with um, where things going at the moment, so... Uh, yeah, please leave a comment as well. I'd love to see if you think we're gone. We will cut well, only a couple of shows away from WrestleMania, so it's a perfect time to join and subscribe because there's going to be some big stuff happening on that show. I assure you. But yes, yeah, so obviously, uh, obviously, this edition of SmackDown, we're gonna. I've got the big kind of. I built the whole show around a big main event between Cesaro and Drew McIntyre for the uh, the final of the number one contendership IC Championship tournament with the winner facing Nakamura at WrestleMania. So that's kind of my whole show. But we do have good match. We obviously have Brock going against Jimmy Uso. Um, obviously trying to get revenge on what he did to his brother Jay last week, or last edition of SmackDown. Obviously we've got a a, a tag team match with Shayna Baszler teaming with Tony Storm against Naomi and a mystery opponent, a mystery partner that we'll obviously find out obviously when we, later on. But um, yeah, it's a good, so it's a more, it's more of a, I'm built in around one main event. But I'm doing a lot of mid-low card stuff to a build up because I want to build up that battle royal. So that's what this show is going to be. But yes, yeah, so hopefully, you, hopefully you enjoy. Let's get started. But obviously before that, we're going to do. We're, let's get started. We're obviously uh, we're going to go and do, do. We're going to start with one or two pre-show matches with some interesting matchups. So we'll start with that first, and then after that, we're going to talk. We're going to Nakamura in the ring talking about his opponents possibly at WrestleMania. But first. Let's go to those pre-show matches. Yes, yeah, so we kick off. Uh, we do a bit of pre-show. So obviously, I don't do pre-shows that much, but obviously, um, I saw Kyle do it. So I thought, why not give it a shot here? Obviously, we we having a pre-show a match between Oscar, who has returned, against Natalia uh, for forty-three. Very good there. Uh, forty-six by Oscar, forty-three by Natalia. Just wanted to see what Os what where's Oscar's levels at. Obviously, I do I do plan to use her at some point, but I just want to see where she's at. And obviously, a nice forty-six. It's pretty good for what you know on SmackDown. Obviously, that means you put it against someone like Charlotte or maybe Sasha Banks. They probably put on a very good match. So that's and that's good stuff here. So yeah, so 44, you know, good there pre-show. Obviously, I've got another pre-show match obviously as well for a 28. Obviously, I put uh, Dragon off. Obviously, I did kind of sign him, but I don't know what to do at the moment with him. Obviously, Heverco doing a better score with a 32, but 21 by. Dr uh, with uh, Dragonoff, I don't know what to do with him yet. I'm just gonna try out and see what I can think, but I'm not quite sure yet. Because obviously, um, I could put him back in NXT UK because I think he used to do the reigning NXT UK champion. Unless they've changed it all since I've done it, so I don't know. But yeah, for 28, that's fine. I'm glad I put the pre-show not on the main show. That would have really tanked the show. But good two pre-show matches. Let's get started on the main show, and we kick off with the IC champion Shinsuke Nakamura talking about. Possibly two people, he, whoever he is going to face uh, at WrestleMania for his IC title. Because tonight is the final of the IC, IC title number one contendership tournament. And um, yeah, so he hits the ring for a 62. Very good. Very good indeed. I'm very happy with that. Great start to the show. That a very solid, very good start to the show. But yes, yeah, so this one's kind of Nakamura in the ring. He's kind of like saying he's been watching this tournament. He's been very impressed of the intensity and kind of all these people putting bodies on the line to face him for the Intercontinental Championship. He loves seeing it because he wants the Intercontinental Championship to be the title again. The title that people like Bret Hart won. Like Bret Hart won, Owen Hart won. You've got, what we see, the Ultimate Warrior. These big names. And at some point, it was up there with the world title, and that's his mission. And to see people do put intense matches and great matches just to even have the opportunity to face him is exactly what he set out all that time ago, months ago. That this year is going to be the year of the IC title. 
but obviously then obviously then you've got um you've got um drew mcintyre comes out kind of implying that you know sort of saying you know this is his year he's having his moment he's going to win this tournament tonight and he's going to face you and he's going to have he is his finally in front of a crowd his wrestlemania moment and then obviously cesaro comes out and he kind of implies that you know he's going to be it's also going to be his year this year because he's going to finally live to his potential and he and nakamura talks about raising the bar raising the bar of the intercontinental making it relevant again cesaro's going to win this tournament he's going to take that title and he's going to take it to heights that's never been seen before and by the end of the year that IC title will be the pinnacle but it all starts tonight because he's going to be and he looks at he looks at Drew and he looks at Nakamura saying Drew I'm going to beat you then I'm going to beat you and then I'm going to start the night after Wrestlemania it's going to be the, the it's going to be the start of the era of Cesaro so and then they'll cause like an intense stare between all three um, and kind of sets up the main event quite nicely for a 62, I think. Uh, but yeah, so obviously I, I could have started, but I just really want to push the IC title because it is a huge title. And it should be, should be booked as like this title everyone wants to achieve. You can't be the world champion. You need to be the Intercontinental Champion because it's kind of a guaranteed gateway to winning the world. Uh, a gateway to one point being main eventing and getting the world championship. So, 62, very good there. So obviously after that we go backstage with Jimmy Uso. Standing outside Brock Lesnar's locker room, wanting to confront him what he did to his brother last week. But Paul Heyman is there waiting for him. So for that, forget a hey, 55, that's fine, that's good, pretty solid. Point not expecting anything crazy or anything like that. But um, yeah, so kind of in situation like the idea of Jimmy like rushes at the, you know, Brock Lesnar, obviously, knocks on the door, kind of wants to face him, like, get your ass out here. I want to face you tonight. You, you know that kind of stuff. But Paul Heyman comes out and kind of like, kind of like, sh- sh- be quiet. No, you don't want to. Brock's in a bad mood tonight. Um, you don't want to face him tonight. If you face him, it's not going to end well for you. He regret like Paul Heyman's like I I didn't I regret what Brock did to your brother last week. But in the mood he's in, that would be child's play compared to what. He in the mood he's in, and if he faces you tonight, I I can't, I can't stop him. I can't stop him from doing something that you will have regret. And um, and then obviously you obviously James, I don't care, I don't care. It's un- disgraceful what he did to my brother. I'm gonna go. I want to face him tonight. And obviously Brock Lesnar hears of this, and then Paul Heyman's gone in his eyes like, oh no, oh no, like and Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar's like, oh, so you want to face me, huh? You want to face me? You're on. And then Paul. And then it's and then it's just like but then we just cut the Paul Heyman going. I warned him, I warned him, and yeah, sets so our match. We've got Jimmy Uso versus Brock Lesnar tonight. But yeah, so but will it end the same as last week, or will it end this? Or will it be different this week? We don't know. We'll find out later on. But obviously, after that, we go next to Naomi, who's a, is backstage being asked, "Who is her mystery partner? Who is her partner that we're facing?" Uh, Shayna Baszler and Tony Storm tonight in a t- in a tag team match. Obviously, we cut to her next for a for a thirty five. That's great. Um, so um, yeah, so obviously this one's kind of like the Oscar. So who's going to be your partner tonight? And she just looks at looks at the interview, smiles, and goes, not saying anything. You just have to wait and see. And um, yeah, and that sets up the ma- the tag team match that is next. Who's going to be our partner? And who, whoever is a partner, can she help her beat Tony Storm and Shayna Baszler? Um, it seems like a, a very cohesive unit and a force. Let's find out. So let's find out. So the, who's going to be the partner? Let's find out. So, and who's going to win? And and this next match, and the winner is... For a 36, of course, I, I shouldn't have moved, right? Mystery partner with Zai Lee. Obviously, we know that she was taken out by Tony Storm a couple of weeks ago. She's back. The team of Naomi, and she helps her get the win. For it says a rear view, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Uh, nothing crazy would suffer what happens in the match. Uh, 36, that's good. Obviously, the high score was his like 20 stone, 36. 22 by Zaylee, no surprise. 33 by Naomi, and a 31 by Shannon Baszler. All in a kind of similar same level, so it makes sense. 36. Uh, so, that's a good level. I like it. But um, yeah, so obviously, Zaylee. 
Um, good there, 12 minute match, good. Oh, it says six minutes match here. Well, maybe I've changed my notes a little bit. But yeah, for the 36, good stuff there. But it's what happens afterwards, as always, with this kind of stuff. That is very good. So obviously after this, obviously now, now he gets, uh, obviously, um, Sh Tony Storm and Shayna Baszler are not happy with this defeat. And obviously Shayna Baszler attacks Naomi from behind for a 34. Um, she has to take her out, so obviously they're beat down. But then obviously... Tony Storm gets out of there as quickly as possible because Xia Li is chasing, is, is wanting to get her hands on Tony Storm and she runs into the crowd with Xia Li in pursuit. But yeah, so we kind of end with like the, both of the rivals there go off. Like so Xia Li and Tony Storm run after the crowd. Naomi and Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler kind of, I, that's good the situation that she does, she breaks, she does, she puts the arm like that and then she hits the arm there. And um, yes, yeah, takes her out. And obviously Naomi is writhing in pain. Shayna Baszler. It looks like the monster and it's the person that she should be in WWE. Obviously, now with Triple H in charge, that the way they're booking it, maybe she finally might reach that potential to share next team. We'll find out. But in my save, I'm obviously going to do that as well because I do like Shayna Baszler. And if they book her well, she's going to be one hell of a star in WWE. So, but yes, yeah, so that's so that's good. So we'll find out more about that next week. But yes, yeah, so 34, happy with that. So obviously after that we talk about, we hear from the WWE Smackdown Tag Team Champions, The New Day, uh, talking about facing all these three teams in that possible elim tag team eliminator um, that's going to happen at WrestleMania. Obviously we hear, and the kind of, Alessio uh, Chang, they're interrupted by the Usos. For A47, very good there. King Woods going struggling off script game. No, that is unacceptable. That is not a thing. It's never a thing. It's not a thing at all. So, but yeah, so anyway, so let's go into it. So obviously the New Day are kind of talking about how uh, it was like, so why have you done this? Like, you had to cho choose your opponent and you want to face all three of these teams at WrestleMania? Are you crazy? And the New Day are kind of coming out going, it's fine, Shem. So no, our mission is to make the tag team division one of the great, best tag division. And obviously we are fighting champions. So of course we want to fight all these teams. Yeah, would we have liked to fight some one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, possibly. But that's not who we are. We're the New Day. You know, we fight all comers. It could be a, uh, it could be a one-on-one -on -one match, a triple threat, a fight, a four-way. Anyone, we face anyone. Challenges. Then obviously, when they say that, the Usos come out uh, backstage. Obviously, interrupt their interview. Kind of sitting there saying, like, just to kind of accusing them. It's like we know what you're doing. You want to face, you want to face all these, uh, you want to face these teams. You want to face them, but you don't want to face us because you're ducking us. You know, you don't want to face us one on one. So you're gonna put. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put us like in uh, these multiple matches, because you know that if maybe you possibly lose your title, you can sit there and say that you know. Well, I wasn't pinned. We tried our best, but you know, and you, but you just don't want to lose to the Usos, and kind of um, yeah, and they're kind of accusing them. And obviously, New Day saying not at all. We'll face you anytime, anywhere, and at WrestleMania. If you win, we'll be happy for it, but. You won't win because we've always got your number, the, the, the Usos, and it's not going to happen. But obviously they're like, well, we'll sort you out sooner or later. But at first we've got to sort out this Brock situation. But we'll be back, and when we go after we focus on those tag tiles, those tag tiles will be ours. Uh, so see you at WrestleMania, um, type thing. Um, yeah, so kind of something to set up that, that I, I think, I think I've set up this is a fair, it's a triple threat or fair four way. I don't know yet. I think I've set it up as a triple threat eliminator. Um, it's been a while since this, so yeah. But I wanted to set this up so it's a situation of like, let's do this feud here. Kind of got to put it there. But um, I know the use has been done to death but against the New Day, but they are the two best tag teams on SmackDown at the moment, so it makes sense. But um, yeah, so obviously that 47, very happy with that. So obviously after that, we cut to Happy Corbin, who the name doesn't really justify his mood at the moment because he's not really happy, he's worried. Because obviously he's got a match with Santos Escobar and the um, and the, 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 the I can't Fantasma, and they've got he's got a match with him tonight. Um, so obviously we go backstage with him talking about his problems. Forty three, very good there. Uh, Forty three talking about his problems, sitting about being in debt, his gambling addiction, that kind of stuff. And um, he for what he's done, what Santos Escobar has done to his friend is diabolical and unacceptable. He. He is known for running. He's hiding. I'm hiding everywhere. Get all my wife bum. But tonight, I I have no choice but to face them head on. Ases As Santos Escobar, it's time you finally get stopped, and it's time that Happy Corbin finally faces his demons and overcomes them. 
and um, that's going and he's going to win tonight. So yes, that sets up the match quite nicely. Obviously, we've got Happy Corbin versus Santos Escobar. Who's going to win? Let's find out. And the winner is for a thirty. Yes, Santos Escobar gets the win with a five of the kill. I don't know what that is, but it sounds awesome. <laughs> but for forty-three there, so a forty-three there. A 33 by um, Santos Escobar. Actually really good, but a 30, I don't think is fair. It should have got at least a 40. I think Bruce Pritchard being the Royal Agent probably wasn't the best idea. And the crowd weren't really up for it. But that's fine. I knew it wasn't going to get a crazy score. But um, yes, yeah, it's kind of a situation that I wanted. Obviously, uh, Happy Corbin's got to kind of have consequences to his actions. I, it just has to be a thing. I know you're trying to say, are you turning Happy Corbin face? Possibly. Possibly. And before you say it, his best version was when he was Happy Corbin, a bum, bum ass Corbin, when he had no money. Most character, the most interesting character he's ever done. So, I want to do that as well. So go back to that because then it could be a nice, like, sympathetic character that could actually get him to be over. Just saying. Obviously, I've got no. I want to try out. I want to see what happens. So he might turn heel. He might turn face. We'll see what happens. But I like the idea that obviously at the moment you've got to use him to Santos Escobar. If you're going to debut someone, you've got to debut him strong. He's been beaten down like, you know, Mad Cat Moss. The team looks like a threat. And obviously after the match, I reinforced that by, and was it Happy Corbin begging him to not hurt him anymore? But uh, Leguero El Tasfasma beat him down. And just to show anyone out there to not cross. Not to not cross them, and this is what happens when you cross them. For 27, I don't know why I've put uh, Rich Holland in there. I think I was thinking of somebody else. Um, so which, for, let's forget about Rich Holland. Rich Holland's not in there, but let's take away from that. Um, it's not expecting, I wasn't expecting to be crazy, but yeah, it's just a beat down. Everyone's begging for it, begging like, Leave. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And that's because like, you will be sorry. And it's just a free, like a was. You could, you know, three on three on one beat down, beat down on them all, on him, and then it kind of hits. Um, it was, I think that was it. Power driver he used uh, at San Escobar on Happy Corbin, gets that, get, you know, stands on top of him, gets the mic, a mic and says, "This is what happens when people, when you cross us. Don't cross us, and now we're gonna run this show, and kind of like that. that. Simple. It puts them over quite nicely. It's a great debut. Happy Corbin sets up something interesting. If I decide what to do with him. And that's cool. Cool stuff there. Awesome. Maybe not scoring, but in the long run, this would be a good thing. So, 27, not great, but hey, it's all cool. But next, we hear from one of the people in the main event tonight in the final of the number one contendership tournament for the IC title. Obviously, we hear from Cesaro for 47. Very good there. Doesn't go off script very well. Again, this game, I don't think that sounds like Cesaro. But yeah, kind of, I like the idea of Cesaro talking about how what he said earlier tonight is true. He needs to win this match. There's no... there's. He's fed up of being second place. He's fed up of being the guy that's forgotten. The guy that everyone says, they should push Cesaro. They should strap the rocket to Cesaro. He's always the nearly man. The man that almost done it. The man that almost won the world title. That almost lived his potential. But tonight, he's, it's going to be... They're all going to talk about Cesaro is on his way to reaching his potential. He is going to win this match tonight. And Drew, he respects Drew. I respect you, Drew. But tonight, I need to, I'm going to beat you. It's going to be decisive. And then Nakamura, that title was mine. Because I need to win that title. It's not about, you know, it's nice to win the ice title. I need to win this title. And not, the second best is unacceptable now. So you're going to get the very best Cesaro tonight. And by the end of this night, I will be looking at Nakamura, pointing at him and saying, that title will be mine. So you better watch out, Drew, because because I would do anything, and I mean anything, to win this match. So, sets up the main event again, much more. This mean, this is more than just winning a tournament. This is everything to Cesaro. So, it sets up quite nicely for that. So, obviously, then we cut to the ring, and we hear from the WWE Smackdown Women's Champion in Charlotte Flair talking about why she attacked Shane, uh, was it Sasha Banks last week and why she she thought it was necessary to hit the to hit the bank statement to utterly humiliate her it was very unnecessary so she's in the ring 
Uh, for 42, very good there. Um, so yes, this one is kind of a situation of she comes to the ring and people are kind of like, she's kind of like, people have been asking me. People have been asking me. Why did you attack her last week? Because and then Cesaro was, uh, not Cesaro, Shane, uh, was it, uh, was it, Charlotte Flair was kind of, just to prove a point, this is my show, I run it, no one talks to me like that. And yeah, maybe I, maybe I could, I could have just attacked her and that's it. Maybe I shouldn't have, you know, put in the bank statement, the ultimate humiliation. But just to prove a point that I'm the ultimate submission expert, any submission that is anyone can do, I can do better because I am the peak of excellence. I when I I am a flare, and if there's one thing we are, that we're the top of the mountain. We are the people that are top of the mountain. No one is either ever ever near us. And when it comes to submission moves, we are a submission experts. So I wanted to show that to Charlotte last week. To show that her little bank statement. Yeah, if she does a good job and she has one look up her matches with it. But when I do it, it is ten times better. So and then she comes and then obviously Shashi Banks here enough. She comes out and she sits there and she kind of stays like with no, no talking, sits there that like, was it comes to the ring, attacks Charlotte Flair. We have a two with two or one, we have a like a back and forth, back and forth. But Charlotte was it, Charlotte Sasha Banks gets the upper hand. And what I want to do is want to do like she she hit her move last week. So she banks is going to hit the figure eight on Charlotte. And what makes it even more insulting is she taps, she taps, and ever so that means she can do everyone can do the chart and you tapped out, and sits there and then take and you know releases the figure four leg lock, figure eight takes her toe. And kind of says, you know this is going to be mine very very soon. And chucks her. Chucks her at Charlotte Flair, who's holding her legs in pain. Everyone's checking out the medical staff, that kind of stuff. But yeah, so simple promo, a simple event, but it sets up quite nicely that this match between Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks submission match. Who's gonna? Who's the better submission expert? We'll find out in WrestleMania. But interesting stuff here. Before you two, I'm very happy with that. So obviously after that, we hear from somebody else that's got a gripe with somebody else. Obviously we've got Ricochet confronting Sheamus. Um, and wants to face him tonight in a match, obviously, and that gets a 39. Um, um, I, I didn't put Seamus in it, probably shouldn't. With Paul, we were trying to improvise. Nah, he's more of a, he's not really a speaker, he's more of a, a outstanding wrestler. But um, yeah, but the word I've got here was basically like, if it goes up to Seamus saying, I want to face him tonight, so what he did last week to Drew Gulak, it's unacceptable, it's disgraceful, and I want to face him tonight. But then, sh just when Seamus had to respond, Rich Holland kind of comes in. And kind of says, oh, so you want to face someone tonight? If you want to face Seamus, you've got to get through me. And obviously, Seamus loves this because it's like, I love this attitude, loving this aggression. And obviously, and then Wick says, going, okay. But Seamus, your time is up. So when I, when, when, and tonight, you're going to pay for what you did. So, so Rich, see you in the ring. And then sets up the match that's next. Ricochet versus Rich Holland. Who's gonna win? Is Rich Holland gonna prove a bit of why you know, gonna prove why you know why Seamus put a lot of faith in him, or is Ricochet gonna show why he's an outstanding pro wrestler and why he shouldn't mess with the one and only Ricochet? Let's find out. And the winner of this match is for thirty nine, Ricochet with a I don't know what that move is. That's a very strange move. I I mean I, I put a four fifty. That do like you know a spectacular four was it six forty. Finish who he does. But with a quick match, 46 there, but we could say 23. Very good stuff. Actually, 39 is actually really good. I, I, think that, I think that should get a better score. At least get a 41 at least. But maybe it just wasn't working. But um, yeah, so a good match here. I just wanted to put like Wigshay. Well, I said, as you said, with the bat, with the Andre Giant battle, I want to make this battle royal like it means something, like people actually really want to win it. So, because it hasn't been like that, just been another trophy to win. It like, doesn't really work in wrestling. If it has no anything else doesn't need it so we have that so obviously but after that Seamus um, and Rich Holland do a two-on-one on Ricochet uh, who doesn't you know a two-on-one uh, for that for 39 again um, obviously then his friend comes out with Drew Gulak is back um, you know for the basically it's simple we you know two-on beat down friend comes out and then it ends with a four, a four another 460 on Rich Holland and Seamus outside on the ramp with Ricochet and Drew saying 
your time is up we will we will you will pay for what you did and Seamus is like oh god what have I done so it sets up a few quite nicely and it kind of maybe sets up a tag team match next week but I like it it's simple it does the job and obviously it sets up a very interesting dynamic going into that battle royal that again I like and also I don't know if I put this in other streams new name Forgotten Generation I think's a great name I think it's a great name let me know what you think in the comments below if you like that name but I think it's a cool name but obviously after that we hear from possibly other people who've got resentment issues and people that want to make an impact and that is the Raw Raiders for 35 obviously have resentment um, I like the idea that basically they're into so obviously after their return like last couple of weeks what is their intentions and kind of they want to show that in this company no one can beat no one can beat the intensity the drive of they put the Viking Raiders I'm calling them the Royal Raiders because that's what they are they're a very big NXT fan and at WrestleMania they're going to finally win those tag they're going to finally win tag gold and then they're going to run Russia over Smackdown because no one when it comes to going to war we are the experts on war so if you want to go to war anyone out there bring it on and obviously, uh, was it Angel and Mustafa Ali? They actually didn't actually won a team. I need to make them a team, apparently. I think it's the other one I messed up there. But they come out and say, well, you want a war? We, well, we want to fight you tonight. Because I, I don't think you're really... You're just, you're, just, you're just basically two guys thinking you're Vikings, wearing weird face paint. You're not scary. You're not intimidating. You're nothing. And tonight, face us tonight. And I'll prove it. We'll prove that if anyone's going to win those tag team gold, it's going to be us. And then kind of sets up that match is next. The Royal Rangers versus Andrew and Mustafa Ali. So who gets to win? Let's find out. Four. 29. Ouch. A lot of these matches aren't clicking. The, the, this is lower mid card. But that's fine. Obviously, we got, was it Eric hit, um, was it they hit the Viking, the Viking experience on Angel for the win. Um, but yes, obviously the highest score is obviously Mustafa Ali with 38. I thought with 36 pretty good. Obviously low score is Angel with 30. But they're all on a similar level, so that makes sense. But um, yeah, it's a simple one here. I just wanted to put these two together. Uh, 29, not great. It's been an okay show so far. It's been an okay show. I don't think the match... Because I put a lot of lower card stuff in. Mixed in with... Because I'm putting all banking all my money on the main event. So if the main event pulls off, I might have a good show. But... Good stuff here. Obviously, I just want to put the put connection between these two, see what happens, and obviously, so the Viking Raiders or the Royal Raiders have the advantage, and have momentum. So maybe they can take that into their Eliminator at WrestleMania. We'll find out soon enough. But obviously, that'll be soon. But next, we're going to hear from Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns talking backstage. We're kind of Paul Heyman, kind of trying to convince, trying to get Roman to convince his cousin that going against Brock tonight is a very bad idea. For 52, very good, actually, very good. Um, so, yeah, so just like the idea, Paul Heyman kind of like, still has respect for Roman Reigns. He's still his tribal chief. Obviously, now he's representing Brock Lesnar. But I like the idea of him going like, Brock, what, Roman? J talk to Jimmy. He doesn't want to face Brock tonight. He will destroy him. He will. And I know, and I know how much your cousins mean to you. Your family, sort of the bloodline, everything. You don't want you don't want Brock taking them out at WrestleMania. You, you don't want you don't want to have like this. Brock is an untamed animal. You don't want this. And Roman's like, uh, I I don't know. So I like the idea of Roman kind of being like, I trust my cousins. Do you think I have any power on my cousins? But well, Brock, do you think I'm scared of Brock Lesnar? Do you think my cousins are scared of Brock Lesnar? He, he thinks that just because he can walk around intimidating people, that he's the big dog in this company. I'm the big dog. I'm the tribal chief. This is my company. And if anyone's going around intimidating people, taking people out, it is the tribal chief. So you take that message to your client. Because tonight, I'm going to send a message to Brock that this is my show, that is my ring, and if an and he can't just sit there and take what is mine. So you send that message, Paul. 
because that's what's going to happen tonight. So, yeah, so a big kind of let off. Like, so Roman's kind of a situation at the moment where he's he's fed up of Brock. He's fed up of him and he finally wants to and he, and he find up and thrown his way around. And tonight he's going to send him a message or at least maybe it might be Jimmy sends the message. Maybe he might come out. We don't know. But that's what I like about this feud. But yeah, so let's go with, so let's go, that match is next. Brock Lesnar versus Jimmy Uso. Who's going to win? Is Jimmy Uso going to get a shock win or is Brock going to do what he did to his cousin? Ask uh, Jay and, and just throw him around like a ragdoll and just get the win. Let's find out. So the winner of the match is, well, 55, Brock Lesnar, no surprise, for, with an F5. But um, yeah, this is uh, pretty good. I like six, was 63 by Brock. 41 by Jimmy, 55. I think I could have done better, but apparently Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman on different... That divide I need to change. It will change, hopefully. But um, but yeah, so I like the idea of this. Obviously, Brock basically dominating. Uh, Suplex City, F5s, but you know, one F5. It's the same as last week, basically. But it's what happens afterwards that's the interesting thing. So obviously, after the match, obviously Brock is the win. And obviously, then, obviously, keeps uh, beat, like he did to his cousin last week, keeps the beat down on Jimmy. And it hits him with an F5 in the ring. But why this distraction on Jimmy? Roman Reigns comes from behind. And 451. And hits a spear. Boom. On Brock Lesnar. Takes him out. And then gets uh, was it Brock gets up again. Hits another spear. Boom. And then he gets uh, and then then he was he and he looks at Brock and he goes intensely in his eyes saying, You won't take this. This is my show, Brock. Not yours. And at WrestleMania, I'm going to finally prove that when it's, when I face you, face me, I, I'm always the better man. And it kind of like intensely in Brock's looking at Paul Heyman's like going. Look, basically, Paul, Paul Heyman's Brock is shocked. He's like, oh, my God. Like, you know, it's like, you know, Paul Heyman's Paul Heyman. But I like the idea here that basically Roman's kind of send the message saying this is his ring. This is his show. And Brock's not going to intimidate anyone anymore. Because I'm the tribal chief, and if anyone's running this show, it's me. So, yeah, sets up the interesting stuff next week, or whatever, WrestleMania. But yeah, it's simple, again, another simple stuff, it works. So, obviously, after that, we hear from a person that hasn't pre Brock Lesnar, but obviously not with feud, and obviously, we're hearing another, another person that's going to be involved in the main event tonight is obviously Drew McIntyre, talking about, was it facing Sheamus, uh, Cesaro, I mean, and about um, the IC Championship. 458, very good there. Um, so, yeah, so talking about Samus Cesaro saying, I heard what Cesaro said. He's going to bring everything tonight. And I'll, I'll respect nothing less for a man that is a pride of his class. He is the one of the best wrestlers out there. Obviously, I'm saying wrestling, this isn't my show. Um, so, true. But what Cesaro doesn't mean, he thinks this, he has the intensity, he has the drive. But he hasn't got the drive of the Scottish psychopath. The Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre. I've had, I've had to, I've, I've been, I've been sacked from this company. I've come back. I've worked my way up. I beat Brock at WrestleMania. I beat Brock at WrestleMania. But it was in front of no one. Then I had an opportunity last WrestleMania. I had a chance to beat against Bobby Lashley for double championship, win it, and win in front of a crowd. But I lost. They always say third time's the charm. Yes, I'm. it's not for the world title. But I've worked too damn hard for too damn long to not have my WrestleMania moment. And Cesaro, I respect the hell out of you. But tonight, it's going to end with how it should end. With a Claymore kick to your face. One, two, three. Then I face Nakamura. And I take his title. And I can have my WrestleMania moment. Finally. And then I'll take this icy towel and I'll do what I did through the WWE Championship during the pandemic. I'll take it to new heights. I'll, I'll take it to new heights. I'll, I'll go to the, I'll reach the top and the icy title will be great again. We're both on the same wavelengths, so I respect that you have the same goal. But there's only one person winning tonight coming out facing Nakamura at WrestleMania. And that's going to be me. So bring your best, but I'm afraid it's not going to be good enough so yeah so i've uh, i like the idea they're both putting big promos on each other they respect each other but one only one guy can come out of this match who uh, the suspense is killing me the suspense is probably killing you who's going to get the win who's going to face nakamura at wrestlemania 
Is it going to be Sazawa or is it going to be Drew McIntyre? So let's find out in our main event. And the winner and the score is for a 45, Drew McIntyre. I gotta be honest, when that's not the greatest rating ever, but 55, 44, 45, uh, it's kind of makes sense in the middle. But um, yeah, for a 12 minute match, I like it. It's a decent, it's a decent end, but I think I built it up quite nicely. I don't think the score reflects how it probably would come across in real life. But um, but yes, yeah, so obviously this one is a um, a good match here. I kind of um, on the fly, I kind of like the idea that obviously Shazal hits a neutralizer, Drew kicks out, and then we have a situation where he tries to go for it again. Um, he counters out of it. He counters. Uh, Drew McIntyre counters into the uh, the future shock. DDT uh, tries to go to pin, kicks out. Cesaro gets up, tries to go for a claymore. Cesaro uh, Cesaro counters it again. Then then obviously uh, Cesaro tries to neutralize. He counts again. Drew hits the future again. That's to, that's two now. Turns around, boom, claymore kick on Cesaro. One, two, three, and we have a new number one contender. So it's going to be Drew McIntyre versus Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. I can't wait to see where that goes. But obviously, good match here. But we don't. that's not the end of the show just yet. Obviously, we have Nakamura coming down to the ring. And he kind of... It's a good old-fashioned visual stare down that you know I love. For a 61, a nice stare down with Nakamura holding the title high. And... Drew doing the thing with the, you know, the thing that they do um, to signal they want the title. And it sets up a, a, a very interesting match at WrestleMania. Look, this is how the IC title should be. Two big, one, the big stars facing off for a title that means so much. This is what I like. So 61, it's basically a simple stare down. I like it. Both got greens, good stuff here. So the question is, what's the score? What's the, what's it going to be? A lot of like low scores, a lot of stuff that hasn't hit as much. So if I can get a fifty, a, a, a mid, a, a mid to low fifty, I'll be happy with that. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets like a forty-eight. Hope he doesn't, because he needs to get. So let's find out. So let's score. Uh, this edition of Friday Night SmackDown is a forty fifty-four. That's actually all right. I was, it was kind of what I was expecting. Because obviously the main event. As you can see, a lot of like you know thirty nines, like twenty nines, like because I did a lot of lower mid card stuff here. I had to build up because I wanted you wanted to build up the IC, the um, battle royal as well. Um, so a lot of the matches were like kind of lower mid card stuff, but I think I you know it, it does the job. Obviously, I did try to build up quite nicely with the main event. I think that the main event did well. Forty five, obviously, I expected. I would love to get it at sixty, but you know, we're not there yet. But um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Forty five, fifty four. I think I think that's fine. That'll do. That'll do for me. Uh, obviously, at some point, I will. My mission is hopefully at some point if I, um, we'll get 70, 60, I think 65 is the best I've done, 62 or something. So, 54, good stuff here. But I'm still building. So, obviously, Drew and Cesaro are stars that I want to push, but they're not at the level that they should be, that I my how I feel about them are. So, um, but yeah, 54, good. Good stuff here. We'll see what an interesting SmackDown in the next. Then when we do SmackDown, uh, SmackDown booking next time. But obviously, uh, we obviously were two more shows away. So to our version of WrestleMania. So it's gonna be interesting. But 54, I'm happy with that. It's good stuff. So yeah, so 54, I'm happy with that. Again, I think because a lot of the um, mid low card matches, like you know the tag team match, uh, the women's tag team match, uh, the obviously uh, Happy Corbin versus. Santos Escobar, those kind of matches, they're kind of like, you know, 39 lower cards, do have to build them up a little bit. But yeah, I think the main event, like 40 odd, I think it's 48, pretty good. It was a good show, I mean, for, to get that 54, it's good, I mean, it's a mid world show. I obviously would love to get better score, but again, SmackDown, I think needs a little bit more work than Raw at the moment. I think I've realised that from some of the scores I've seen, so I need to build up a lot more, a lot more work has got to be on SmackDown than Raw, so... They're not getting as much scores as much as I would like, but that's cool. That's what the whole point of this save is to build. So, yeah, it's 54. I'm happy with that. Sets up for the, the, the Go Home Show or, or the SmackDown version of Go Home Show very nicely. Obviously, uh, but yeah, 54, very good there. So, um, but yeah, so hope you've enjoyed this edition. Um, I am back. Um, hopefully, um, there's no slip-ups or anything outside, of, outside this in life that doesn't, make, that doesn't make me kind of feel that I can't do this at the moment. Hopefully not. So hopefully we'll be back. Um, we'll be back next week with our our go home show on Raw. 
uh, having uh, it should be an interesting one. Plan it to be a really like exciting show. Hopefully, uh, maybe I can see if I can get it. Maybe I can push it to see if I can get the best score of the save so far. Um, so that'd be great. Um, but yes, yeah, so obviously, and then we obviously got SmackDown the week after that. So yeah, I've got big. I've got plenty of plans. We're going to build up. We've got three shows left. We've got what, now two shows left going into the biggest event of WrestleMania. So and I've got a really big WrestleMania plan. So hopefully you enjoy it. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Um, hope you enjoyed, and I'll be back hopefully next week with more TW Twenty Twenty Fancy Booking. So it should be good. So yeah. So until then, have an awesome week and bye for one. Bye.